Thank you all. I want to thank my Aunt Mary for holding the Bible on behalf of my grandfather, Cecil McCleary, who left us a few days ago. I want to thank all the dignitaries that are here and members of city council, my colleagues on city council. Um, I'm on the other side, so y'all take it easy on me. <laughs> I want to thank Mayor Richards for his service to our city. You know, you planted the seed and I'm gonna water it. I wanna thank the citizens of Rochester for your support and for your votes. And I'm truly honored to stand here as your mayor. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> to my family, my husband Tim, my daughter, uh, for all those volunteers that supported me and helped me this summer, I truly, truly would not be standing here without your help. And I thank you. And to my mentor and father, Assemblyman David Gant, I want to say thank you. Even though he called me on December 31st and told me that I was fired at midnight. <laughs> it was okay. I am truly and deeply honored that you are here to share this very special day with me. On March 22nd, 2013, I stood a few miles from here and said that together we had the power to make history in Rochester, you did it. We did it. You made history by not only electing your first female mayor, but by electing a mayor who understands what it's like to go to bed every night and wake up every morning thinking about our future and how we can make it as bright as it can be. I would like to dedicate this day in this speech to my grandfather, Cecil McCleary Sr. <laughs> who I wish with all my heart was here with us today, wishing that he was physically here to watch me take my oath, to hold my grandmother's Bible and smile that big smile and tell me, well done. You know, traditionally, swearing-in ceremonies and inaugural speeches are filled with soaring language and lofty ideas, and perhaps, yes, a few worn-out expressions. But I hope to communicate to you in quite a different way today. Because of the technology in which we live, our words can be recorded and reviewed forever by whomever wants to look back at them. And one of those people may be my own child, my daughter Taylor. And so today, I want to make some promises to her and the children of Rochester that are also my promises to the people of Rochester. My dear Taylor, you are three years old. Your world is small and secure and full of wonder. Your future will depend on many of the people in this room today and our ability to work together to make a better city for you to grow up in. When I was your age, Kodak employed 50,000 people. Tens of thousands more moms and dads and aunties and uncles worked at Xerox and Bosch and Lam and other companies too. Many people moved here seeking a better quality of life for their families. They got well-paying jobs, a quality education for their children, and access to opportunities that were not available to them where they came from. But over time, Things changed. As you grow up, you will discover that change can be hard. When we do not like the things that are happening around us, we may choose to ignore them. Oftentimes, we continue to do the same things over and over again because we fear the unknown. But I believe that we can't turn a blind eye to change. We can make things better, and my eyes are wide open to the possibilities. Today, I am being allowed to begin a great journey 
with a lot of people by my side. And I am so proud. I promise you that I will try very hard to do a good job because your future and the future of every child who lives in this city will depend on what we all do every single day for many days to come. <laughs> Working to improve our schools and giving parents access to better quality educational alternatives is my priority, and I will fight tirelessly to do that. I know this isn't going to be easy, but I'm going to fight for changes and outcomes with the fierceness of a parent defending their child, because I am defending you and all of Rochester's children. The downtown I grew up in is very different from the downtown of today. It was fun and vibrant. It was great. I want you to know how enjoyable a lively downtown can be. The downtown I want you to grow up in will be one of art, entertainment, light, nightlife, diversity, and growth. It will have more people living and working there because there will be reasons to live and work there. I want today's children to grow up seeing Rochester as a city where they can raise their own families because this is a good city, a city we love, a city that's worth fighting for. I want Rochester to have safe, caring, and nurturing neighborhoods and to sure, ensure this we have to accomplish a lot in a relatively short period of time. But I have a strong team who share my desire to have our city be everything to you as it has been to me. And we are ready to get started. So today, in front of all of these people and being recorded for you to watch as you grow, let me promise you this. This is a moment in time when things begin to change. This, this is a moment in time when our governmental goals become goals that take on deeply personal meaning to all of our families. So this is not just my promise to you, Taylor. It is my promise to all of Rochester's children. We will fix our schools because you and every child deserves that. We will make our neighborhoods safe and a source of pride. We will work hard to put people back to work, lessen the disparities, and bridge the divides that separate us. We will rebuild our downtown and make you proud to be a Rochesterian. We will bring people together to accomplish all of this. Promises, promises, promises are all well and good, but only if they lead in one direction, towards progress. It is my strong belief that we will turn promises into progress. And that brings me back That brings me back to where I started with my granddad. Because his life story is at the core of what motivates me. His mother died when he was three. And his father never really acknowledged him. Instead of being allowed to go to school, he was required to work in the field at the tender age of seven. And education was not an option for him. Despite being raised without knowing the love of his birth parents, he and my grandmother raised eight children, a host of nieces and nephews, and 24 grandchildren with an abundance of joy and love. My grandfather showed me that as parents and as a community, we must do right by our children.
We must do everything in our power to ensure that our children receive a quality education and live in safe neighborhoods. We must help their parents obtain living wage employment so they have a better quality of life. <laughs> have the option of sending their children to college or the armed forces or into the skilled workforce. And we must lure our young people back home to a thriving city that values them for the treasures that they are. My granddad never learned to read, but was able to own his own business, work hard every day, give to the church, and provide for his family. I know that Rochester is strong and our people are resilient. Rochester is filled with people, everyday folks that you pass on the streets who overcame adversity and personal challenges to make their little corner of the world, their little corner of our city, we call home a better place. We can learn so much from them. And so I say to you and to Taylor and to the children of our city, no matter where you start, you can finish strong. We can believe in ourselves. We can do better, and we will. I, we, will work hard every single day to make this city, our city, as great as it can be. George Bernard Shaw once said, I am of the opinion that my life belongs to the community. And as long as I live, it is a privilege to do for it whatever I can. I want to be thoroughly used up when I die. For the harder I work, the more I live. Life is no brief candle to me. It is a sort of splendid torch which I've got a hold of for a moment and I want to make it burn as brightly as possible before handing it on to future generations. This is my promise to you, citizens of Rochester, a promise that I intend to keep. And at this time, I would like to bring to the stage the team that's going to help me fulfill this promise. Thank you all, and God bless. Thank you, Mrs. Mayor. All right, round of applause. <laughs> 